So we're going to look at the ideal analysis and this time we're going to consider what happens if we install an afterburner uh, at the rear of the engine. So there's our analysis uh, to date and we've put in an afterburner unit and we're going to assume that we can heat the gases in here to 2000 degrees Kelvin and we're going to see how much thrust we produce and um, what fuel burn we're going to use. Okay, so I'm going to look at the critical pressure here at the nozzle. And there's the formula for it. And if I plug in the values, well, if I have 244 kilopascals here, we burn it under constant pressure. That means I have 244 kilopascals at this point here. And using the ratio here, assuming gamma to be 1.4, um, I can see that the critical pressure at this point is 129 kilopascals. I can also uh, determine the critical pressure, temperature, sorry. Um, but the gas here now, it was 797 degrees Kelvin here, but we've reheated it. So the temperature of the gas is 2000 degrees Kelvin at this point. And putting across the nozzle then, we can see that the critical temperature now becomes 1667 degrees Kelvin. Right, the critical pressure was greater than atmospheric pressure, which was 101, therefore the nozzle was choked. And I can therefore connect, uh, calculate the velocity of the gas at the jet nozzle uh, using this formula. And when I plug those numbers in, I get 818 uh, meters per second. Okay, I want to uh, work out what the density of the air is. Well, from the ideal gas laws, the density is pressure over R uh, by T. So I'll plug in the value. So at this point here, it was 129 uh, kilopascals. R is a constant at 287, and the temperature at the nozzle was 1667, which we just calculated. That gives me a density of 0.27. I can work out what the cross-section area of the nozzle is uh, from the continuity equation. The mass law is rho AV, so rearranging that I'm plugging in uh, 100 kilograms, here we are, 100 kilograms for the mass, the density 0.27, and my velocity of 818, which I just calculated, I get the area of the nozzle to be 0.45 meters squared. Okay, I now calculate the thrust. Well, the aircraft is stationary, so mass by velocity of jet is 100 by 18, 818, plus um, the pressure trust, that's the area in the nozzle, and the pressure differential, 129 kilopascals here, 101 kilopascals here, and I plug those numbers in, I get 94.4 kilonewtons. Okay, the fuel required, well, the um, air going in is 797 degrees Kelvin, it's coming out at 2000 degrees Kelvin, so there's the change in temperature. There's the mass, and if we zoom that the specific heat capacity at constant pressure is one kilojoule per kilogram. I can see that the amount of fuel energy required is this figure here, 120,300 kilojoules. And if I know the calorific value of fuel is 43,000 kilojoules per kilogram, dividing one into the other gives me a fuel uh, burn rate of 2.797 kilograms per second. So, when we did the analysis of the engine originally, we were burning 1.18 kilograms of fuel. Uh, we are now burning uh, 2.797 kilograms of additional fuel. So, the specific fuel consumption, that's my total fuel burn. So, it's the total fuel multiplied by 3,600 to bring it from seconds to hours. And dividing that by the total trust gives me um, a value of 0 0.51 kilograms per hour per newton. Well, when we did the original uh, engine and did some, some of the previous videos, you'll see that the thrust was 59.7 kilonewtons and the specific fuel consumption was 0 0.071. So, just compare uh, the two engines. So, the, that's what the thrust and uh, specific fuel consumption was. That's what it is now with the afterburner. And we can see, you know, increasing 
roughly 60,000 to roughly 90,000 is you know, approximately uh, a 50% increase in trust. And the fuel gone from 0 0.071 up to 0 0.151. So we can say that the specific fuel consumption has doubled or increased by 100%. Um, and that's it. That's the last of the videos on the ideal jet, and the next videos will be on uh, looking at a, a real, a real-life application. Thanks for watching.